it's finally time to see the movie that all those Dorito chip bags were talking about. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my re review for Wonder Woman 1984. About time we finally saw the movie that had the longest food ad campaign of all time. I'm amazed that I was still finding Wonder Woman Dorito chip bags. This movie was supposed to come out in May, and I remember the ad stuff started for it back in March. Mind you, the Wonder Woman Cookie Collision Blizzard that DQ made, that they're still doing, is bar none the best blizzard. But about the movie, yeah, we should talk about this. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of uh, perplexed. The movie is set in the 80s, I think kind of for the sake of being in the 80s. And the crux of the film is there's this magic rock that grants wishes, but it's like a monkey's paw. And the Mandalorian wants to prove to his son and to himself and to everyone that he isn't the loser investor that he thinks he is. He becomes enamored with the ability of wishes. All the while, Kristen Wiig wishes to be like Wonder Woman, but she kind of just goes toe for grace venom bad. It's kind of lacking really in terms of what it's supposed to be. I like the idea of what they're trying to make Cheetah be, but for a movie that is two and a half hours long, it sure spends a lot of time on the things that it shouldn't be. And it doesn't focus enough on the things that it should. Kristen Wiig's development in this film is so lacking, as well as Mando's. They give you his development at the end of the movie. You get this little tidbit that yeah, he likes his son, who by the way is played by a pretty tone-deaf child actor. I'm sorry, little dude. I'm not meaning to wreck you like poor Jake Lloyd was. You're just kind of nothing. And I can say that now as Stranger Things and other programs and other films that we've been making the last little while have proven that we can get good performances out of child actors. So you belong literally in the 80s. Which, by the way, was it obvious that she was trying to kind of encapsulate filming methods as well as just tropes from the 80s? I get what she's doing and I applaud her for trying it. Jenkins definitely tries to do something different from the original Wonder Woman. She didn't have as much creative control of that film as she wanted. The ending was always a part that was added by the producers. So with her having more creative vision, I was a little bit skeptical as well as kind of maybe hopeful that she could do something, but she's definitely not one of those writer directors. Some directors just can't do it and she's kind of one of them. The script for the first film, while basic, was solid. This film has ambitious moments. It has ambitious ideas. There are good parts in this movie. The idea of Zeus is a very compelling character but he's not put together properly. His conclusion, while good, is kind of surprisingly lacking in terms of actual punishment or consequence? Kristen Wiig is uh, not bad. By God, is her stick at old real fast. Gal Gadot, we do definitely see the limits of her acting potential in this film. Myself and others were kind of hesitant about bringing Chris Pine back. It's not the most ridiculous part about the film, and I actually do like how it concludes, even if the music is doing a lot of work to help and body that emotion in that moment. Which, by the way, did Hans Zimmer really just rip off John Murphy's Adagio in D minor? I remember when Days of Future Past used this for their trailer and everyone was like, oh, this is great music. All the while, us Sunshine fans are in the background here going, oh uh, yeah, we, we, we know where it came from. Well, those uptight kind of people who want to tell you, oh, we saw it first in Sunshine. For me, I actually, was very astounded at Hans Zimmer copy and pasting something. Sure, he's done it from his own work, but they didn't ask him or he didn't want to create anything different for this. They just were like, hey, take that right there. I'm just very surprised at the sequel to, at the time, the most well-received film in this entire stupid DCEU has a moment that's so lazy. And then there's the fight scenes, which Yee, there's a lot of kind of interesting sway in this film for that. They try to use as little CG as possible. They have a lot of the actors trying to do the moments. Instead of morphing between real and CG back and forth when it works for both perspectives, they just try to do as much 
practical as possible. And again, I'm going to give the film credit for trying that because that obviously was not the first thing that most producers and most filmmakers would want to do. The Marvel films have essentially turned into the actors' heads on fake bodies. It works for what the universe is set in. DCEU just keeps going back and forth. Considering the entire fight scene with Superman and Batman is almost entirely fake, and then you have all of these scenes in this movie trying to desperately, desperately to be real in as many ways as possible, and it just looks hokey. It, it looks corny. If they're trying to go for that 80s element, boom, you nailed it. Does it work though? When she's falling from the sky and her hair is going all, I know she's the goddess of the Amazon. I know it's supposed to be her kind of falling slower than normal hu human beings. I know it's supposed to be like a godlike presence, but still, her hair would almost look like a jet engine. <laughs> and those parts few far between were the kind of the shining parts for the first two thirds of the film, because it's boring. I'm actually kind of surprised at how long it takes for anything to happen. And in that time, I'm really struggling to keep engaged in it. However, the third half is actually really good. It's kind of a reversal of the first film. The beginning and the middle of that movie was really well done, but obviously the third part of the finale was lacking. This movie is the opposite. The beginning of it sucks, the middle of it's kind of bleh, but then the third part's like, oh yeah, we're entertaining again. I'm surprised and also not surprised at the same time. This is the DCEU. We're all used to this head-banging stupidity at times. <sighs> Don't screw up the Batman, come on guys. Well now, since I have that growing bit of dread inside my body, I'm gonna give this my rating and I'm gonna give Wonder Woman 1984 a three out of seven. The end part is thankfully entertaining and it does bring it out of a complete failure, but it's too little too late. Anyways guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you like this video, leave a like and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.